Well, let's talk to Jackie. No pronouns okay. given. Yep. Uh, calling in from Mouse Scrotums, uh, <laughs> who has some stuff written here in the, in the call screen that I'm not going to read right now. Um, Jackie, you are on AXP. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How about you? Never had a bad day. I have a question for you uh, before we get started. I'm not going to read what's on the call screen uh, right now because it's weird. I'm just going to ask you, are you calling right now with any thoughts of your own or are you calling to quote whatever philosopher you've read this week? So um, I would like to call into this That's, the case for religion as I, nope, nope, or your nope. I'm asking you a direct <laughs> question. <laughs> Are you calling with any of your own independent thoughts or did you read and hear some stuff and now you're talking about it? That's the question. Uh, I don't know. I reject the dichotomy. I, I assimilated. Okay. Well, then we're done. Point. We're done, Jackie. Jackie, it's over. I, I've talked to you a million times, and every single time it's the same. You name drop a bunch of weird philosophers that you like. Nobody knows what you're talking about because we are not philosophy people. We're I'm a biologist. Graham's a lawyer. We're not interested in what you're like. And at the end of the thing, you never present any of your own intelligent thoughts. You just say whatever you've heard other people say that you think was compelling, and it goes absolutely nowhere. I've talked to you a bunch. Graham's talked to you. Matt's talked to you. Jimmy's talked to you. Every other person that is in this entire space has talked to you we've all been thoroughly unmotivated and unimpressed by anything you have to say because you have nothing to say for yourself so if you don't have anything of your own to talk about i'm not interested in talking to you today something of my own i promise so so these are your own thoughts not just something that you heard somebody else say yeah yes i'm saying okay then here's the rules but they are then here's the rules jackie the rule is, if you name drop one philosopher, I'm ending the call. You need to be able to <laughs> yes. articulate your own thoughts on your own. And if you can't do that, and if you say, well, have you heard of this person? Or, well, this person said this, or in this person's metaphysical substrate of whatever, we're done. We're moving on. I want to hear what you have to say and what you think. Can I, add, able a to do that can I add a rule for us? Yes, yes, you can, Graham. What's up? The other rule is... Um, if we ask you a question, please answer the question we ask. We try to do that for all of our callers, and mm-hmm. uh, we ask that you do the same. So, you know, yep. as long as that's going on, we'd love to know sort of the meta for why you keep calling more than Seriously. more than any particular philosopher's uh, position or some obscure argument that is not the reason that 99.99% of the people on the planet believe in a God, it would be mm-hmm. great to hear why do you, Jackie, keep calling? What What are you all about? So I think, Forrest, I love your rule, and uh, I, I'd love to give him this chance. Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. Why do I keep call- calling? Yeah, why, why do you um, call all these shows? Sure. What is your goal, and what, what motivates you? To try and con- um, discuss why I believe religion is a positive force in the world and why um, and the argument for the existence of various metaphysical things associated with religion. So is That's that why you call? Is it, yeah, so you, you believe these things are good and you want to defend these beliefs. So do you think that you've done a good job thus far? Uh, it depends on the specific call. Okay. Many calls, so, so what's an example? Kind of what's an example of what you think is a good point that you have been able to get across while on these shows? Well, so this is a specific argument I'm coming in. Basically, in this call, I would like to discuss the reason why I believe um, religion, specifically the Judeo-Christian tradition, is the basis for how um, human beings have a basic shared civil consent um, and communicative rationality and don't you know, harm other people, as well as the basis of religion and how people um, understand their historical context in relation to the social sciences. Do you believe that anybody that's listening, sorry, do you believe that anybody that's listening that is not already convinced uh, that there is a God is going to hear this conversation and become convinced of a God? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Mm. My gut tells me after speaking to many people that this is not why people believe in gods. It 
it sounds more like the ex post facto rationalization or justification for believing a God once you already have those beliefs. It sounds like the type of thing that people who were raised religious or had some sort of epiphany or had a moment where the church took advantage of them and indoctrinated them. It sounds like those people coming up with reasons to argue with intellectuals as to why there might be 1.0000% chance that they are right. But I'm not sure sure that these sorts of conversations that you are having on these shows time and time again is convincing anybody of anything because they're so abstract and they are so um, off the main point of, you know, why do you believe that a God exists? That's what we really are interested in talking about. I don't know what your thoughts are for okay. us. But and then I, we have to understand why. Yeah, I, I think that the weird thing that you're talking about here is that like you, you're talking about how like the Judeo-Christian uh, morality and all this is like the foundation for our, our moral compass and our, our civilization and all these different ways. As if, you know, in, in 2001 years ago, we nobody knew anything about any of this stuff. We were all just murdering each other all day long. And then all of a sudden, this guy named Jesus came that. along. We we're all like, oh, shit, I guess we better stop. Like, that's it's it's just a weird thing to start out with. But I do think that Graham's question is a lot more important. Um, that, like, when we talk about these things with people, the, the, the vast, and I mean vast majority of theists that we talk to, are people who believe in a literal, a guy, a dude who lives in, in the, another dimension who can literally create matter out of nothing and who interferes with our day-to-day -day lives based on his whims, who uses he, him pronouns, uh, and who cares about who you have sex with and what kind of fish you eat. And so, like, that's who we're actually talking about. So I think rather than dealing with what you're talking about here with this weird quasi pseudo intellectual like just word salad of like it, it, we need religion to understand ourselves i would rather talk about the actual belief and why you hold it do you believe in a literal actual thinking person that you call a god i believe in an ineffable transcendent unity of being is that a god I, I would classify that as a god, yes. Okay. Does this god have a mind? Uh, I believe the basis for being is aware of being. Does this god control <laughs> everything in the universe? I believe the basis for being controls being. Let, let me ask so, one. What does your yeah, god yeah, go want you to do? That's a good question. Um, I believe the basis for being instructs people to um, live by ethical codes, um, and these ethical codes are revealed in Judeo-Christian scripture. Um, All right. I, if I were if I were in I court, could, I'd, I'd object to this being unresponsive. I should back up and lay a foundation here. I made an assumption that, that your God wants some wants you to do something. Do you believe that there your I believe you – I believe you're dodging the question. Is your god an agent? Yes. Okay. If ah, you, if you have an agent, does it desire things? Not instruct, as you said, but does it desire certain outcomes or certain behaviors? I believe the basis of being calls being in certain directions. That's that not, not responding me. Just to be yeah, just to be clear. <laughs> a minute ago I asked if you believe in a god. You talked about this basis of being. I said, is that a god? And you said, Yeah, I could call that a god. And now you're dodging and saying it's the basis of being again and making it this weird extra thing. It's really not necessary. You're a theist. You believe in a god, right? And this is what we're talking about? Yes. I'm yeah, convinced so, of the proposition so, that God exists. Right. So we're, we're going to get to why that's, that's kind of the biggest thing. Graham, did you have a follow up on what you just said before we move on to that? Well, I, I think he didn't respond to the question. Like if, if, if he, you have agreed, Jackie, that your God is an agent, it's got agency. So it can express desires is my question. Does it have desires? Does it have wants? Does it make decisions? So to me, religion gets dangerous when people think they understand what a God wants. So that's my main concern. Do you think your God wants anything, like has a desire? Yes. Okay. Well, how do you know that it has a desire? 
Well, that's not what I called in to talk about. I called in to talk about um, we don't care. specifically the historical. Yeah, I, I know what you <laughs> called in to talk about, and you've got you've got two different philosopher names in your thing. You've got the word metaphysics in the thing. Like I, I'm surprised the word substrate in the thing. I frankly don't <laughs> give half a damn about what you put in the thing. It's boring. I'm interested in why you believe in what you believe in. So, like, if you're not going to talk about well, that, then it's really belief. not productive because uh, define belief, accepting uh, as comporting with reality. Yeah. Do if you think something is actually real, then you would. I would say you believe in it. Okay, so I'm convinced both of the propositional and existential embodied um, phenomenology that um, the religious um, metaphysical ethic demands. So I believe both the. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my Jackie uh, bingo card out. I I got Jesus. an existential. Um, I need a uh, substrate to get a diagonal bingo. Right. So I got, I tell, I tell you, Jackie, I believe sincerely, I, with my whole heart, I believe that uh, uh, restruct that enzymes like uh, um, uh, uh, histone deacetylase are going to cause chromatin to restructure from heterochromatin into euchromatin when, when re, uh, re, uh, reorganizing compounds come along and redo it. And then that's going to cause uh, genes to become transcriptionally active as opposed to where they might've been transcriptionally inactive and that's where you can get all sorts of new carcinomas developing uh, in certain circumstances and that's why it's really important that we use things like epi drugs to treat does any of what i said make sense to you is it useful to you in any way from what, what i'm talking about in this moment if i'm talking about things like uh, histone to uh, tra methyl transferase if i talk about histone methyl transferase and the way that it can uh, uh, add methyl groups to uh, the 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 protein residues of a histone rendering uh, a gene transcriptionally inactive by remodeling euchromatin into heterochromatin is that something that you you can like you know elucidate for me and like give your opinion on i don't know what those terms mean right because well, i'm listen. speaking from a graduate level of biology about something really niche and specialized and it means fucking nothing to you so if you're gonna talk about this stuff you need to be able to use like language that everybody listening can actually pick up on i don't care about the philosophy babble man it's not for me everything that i just talked about i can explain very i was talking about epigenetics i can say that certain genes can be turned on or off when certain environmental factors okay. affect the way that your genome is read that's what i just said but i was describing these really complicated interactions of molecules and shit that don't mean anything to anybody so do you believe that this God is real? Difference. And if so, why? Can I explain why? Oh, yes, I am convinced of that proposition. But can I explain why this is different in terms of the terminology for future reference so you can understand where I'm coming from? The way I, I know. Actually, the answer, the answer is no, Jackie. I think our viewers have – we have been on your time on every call prior to this one, you are on our time now. Basically, we are fed up with a call that usually comes in and says, hey, I've got this, you know, thought of the day. Um, you explain some sort of philosophical position. We then start asking you questions about it or about your beliefs, and it becomes very evident that you don't know beyond the, the, the surface level. You don't understand what you're reading and parroting back to us, and that you don't really care about the underlying discussion that this show and other shows are all about, which is what evidence – do you have that your God is real and that you know it's mind? Why do you believe those things? That's what we care about. I personally, and I think Forrest cares about this too, care about where the rubber hits the road. I don't care mm -hmm. about anything else other than people get informed by their beliefs and those beliefs are going to cause actions and those actions can harm people or they can help people. It's that simple and you have – consistently refused to explain your own motivations, your own beliefs. And you want to, I think his, <laughs> your, your, your phrase for us is perfect. This philosophical techno babble, um, even if it was the smartest thing ever said is not for our audience. It's not for me. And uh, it's not why people believe in a God. It's just not. Exactly, man. If you can't explain it to anybody, then you don't understand it yourself. Like you have to be able to break something down into a way that normal people can understand. And like I said earlier, you know, uh, Graham is a lawyer. I'm a biologist. Neither of us are equipped for that kind of thing. And the fact that you cannot use these like simple language to get your point across tells me that you're just you're just regurgitating what somebody else said to you and it freaking sucks and i remember the first time i talked to you it was, it was either the first or the second i just when i had jesse jurdak on as a host and 
he laid it out really succinctly and beautifully about how young men like you fall into this bullshit pipeline of a bunch of pseudo intellectuals who use ridiculous, outrageous, fancy, stupid language like what you're talking about here in order to sound as smart as possible to give people who young men who don't have direction and are feeling abandoned or feeling outcast to get sucked into their circle so they can tell them a bunch of bullshit and make them believe a bunch of horrible things and act like horrible people all capitalizing on those feelings of loneliness and abandonment. You've talked about Jordan Peterson a few times. I know you misgendered the hell out of Dr. Ben, and here you've got no pronouns given on your thing. I bet you anything if I scratch the surface of your argument, I'd find some bullshit transphobia down there. <laughs> because at the end of the day, all you're doing is you're getting sucked into these pipelines of people who make a living, make a business out of finding young, disenfranchised men who feel disillusioned with the society they live in, feel abandoned by the world, feel lonely, feel scared, feel uncomfortable, and they tell them, you have to take charge of your life. You have to be the one in charge of everything. You have to be, you can just be a man, a big, strong man, and also hate everybody I tell you to in order to stay outraged and stay subscribed. And then you'll feel more sad, more lonely, more angry, and you'll keep coming back for more. Just every time I talk to you, man, that's it. You buy into these pipelines. You buy into these bullshit talking points. You quote mine a bunch of shit. You name drop a bunch of shit. We get absolutely nowhere with the call. Nobody learns anything. And as Graham has very eloquently pointed out a few times, you never once in any circumstance ever under, like for no reason, will you ever actually talk about why most people believe in a call uh, in a God, let alone why you believe in a God. It's just God's useful. God's an idea that I like. God does some stuff in society that I like. And you've clearly never thought about why that's very obviously wrong. Jackie, I asked you at the beginning, do you have any new thoughts for us? Here's your opportunity. Do you have any new reason of your own, your own thought as to why you believe in a God? Yes. The base, so basically, this, the way this differs from previous calls is in this co- time, I'm going to be arguing that um, the hermeneutic understanding most people have in relation to society and themselves um, is um, in the historical context rooted in Judeo-Christian values in um, contemporary Western culture. And Does that is, mean it's true? Um, the model of truth we as a society agree upon um, through Judeo-Christian values is a pragmatic and um, beneficial. So, so what you've said is we all operate under this framework and because we operate under this framework, we operate under this framework. That doesn't tell me whether or not this is true. You asked me to define belief, define truth for me, Jackie. What does it mean if something is true? Well, there are two definitions of truth. There's the correspondence theory of truth and there's the coherence definition of truth. And one can say in a pragmatist tradition that um, many times people construct models because they um, work in their modality of being. Let me ask an that's, easier that's, question. That's um, yeah. actually at court. Uh, when you uh, put your hand on a document or when you're sworn into court, they ask you, uh, do you swear to tell the whole uh, correspondence with the modality of being uh, or not? Uh, that's the common day f- explanation. Do you understand <laughs> that what you said is not what anybody else cares to uh, use when discussing truth? It's a very simple answer. It's it's it. I'm not going to dictate one, but it, it it's a very simple answer. It's something like things that comport with reality, right? That's mm-hmm. one answer. It's not yeah, a but, five but paragraph I'm answer. Jurgen Habermas and Hans George Gadamer were speaking. About I don't want to hear about them. I want to hear about you. There it is. I want to hear about you. Could you literally couldn't help yourself to bring up some <laughs> other fucking asshole whose farts you've been smelling. <laughs> I don't been care. The whole time. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Jackie. Like honestly, is is Santa Claus real, Jackie? Do you believe that Santa Claus is real? I'm not convinced of the proposition that Santa Claus exists. What if I what if I convince what if I convince billions of people around the world and they start like a civilization that persists for thousands of years and over the course of time, thousands of years from now, like the a big portion of the world all believe that Santa Claus is real and operate under the framework that Santa Claus is real and they have a moral system that's dictated by the beliefs that they want to do such and such thing in order to get presents and not get coal. Does that mean that Santa Claus is real? 
it would not be in accordance with um, objective reality. Then, then everything you have ever fucking said to me, Jackie, is useless because the utility of religion, the, the philosophical framework of religion, the moral system of religion, with how we use religion in our society, not one bit of it matters at all. We're asking you, is God real? And that is a question about whether or not God is real. When I ask <laughs> if God is real, what I mean to ask you, what I'm really actually getting at is whether or not God is real. I'm not asking you if the belief in God does something for you or something for society, or if we live in this framework, or we have this cultural metaphysical substrate or whatever the fuck else. I'm asking you, is God real? Why do you think God is real? I'm convinced the um, I am convinced of the proposition that God defined as an omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent basis for being exists independent of human consciousness. If that's what you're asking, I thought that no. Was he asked. Clear. He asked I, why. I asked you, he why, asked why. You it's real. And you said you you stated what you believed, and I was sitting here waiting. I was waiting for a comma oh, because. Why I believe is what you're asking. Yeah. Because yeah, there needs well, to be a because. I, I believe I, I X can't because stress enough. Yeah, why? So you believe in a God because fill in the blank. There are multiple reasons. What is um, your best one? The God. best one. Uh, the teleological argument is pretty strong. That's what convinced okay. you? Uh, it's one of m multiple things which convinced me. You said it's the best one, right? Uh, it, it's a pretty strong one. I think the teleological argument, if, if um, it, it holds up probably the best. Okay, give me your breakdown of the teleological argument because I have mine and I want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. So basically the fact that the variables which permit life in the universe um, are like so an astronomically small that they would be because there's so many variables that would cut off the possibility mm -hmm. of life. The fact that there is life when there are so many possible universes where there's not life, in my opinion, is evidence that um, there's an intelligent creator, right? In the same way, the complexity of a water. So it's the fine-tuning argument is what it is. Yes. Yeah. So the the the, uh, the theological argument, the universe is so incredibly fine-tuned, so incredibly precise, it's perfectly it's organized to produce blah, blah, blah. About. I don't care. I said That's we are no longer on your time. <laughs> We're not. on our time. This is what, what our listeners care about. They want to mm -hmm. understand why somebody like you keeps calling not only this show, but every show in this space time and time again gets shut down because – when as soon as we go past one layer of your conversation to get two layers deep, you start saying, I don't know. And and eventually you just either walk away or, or we dismiss the call. It's boring. Mm -hmm. It's just boring. This is a show that's trying to fight Christian nationalism in the United States. We are trying to make sure that people who have malintent don't take over our government. And you're coming at me with the fine tuning arg argument. Do you think that the people who are going to try to lock people up that don't believe the same thing in them are convinced that they should do so because of the fine tuning argument? Or do they believe that there's a literal agent that wants them to do that? Uh, I'm convinced there's a literal agent because I believe in the fine tuning argument. I but, didn't uh, ask you I that. Don't know why. I need you to actively listen. OK, I asked you, do you think that the people, the type of people who would want to take over an entire government, make it a theocracy and lock religious opponents, people who don't believe in the same God as they do, lock them up in cages? Do you think those people would do so because of the teleological argument? Most probably not. Okay, that's our point. That's what we're interested in talking about. We can have uh, coffee at a coffee shop and stare at our navels all we want to talk about all these different philosophers and the utility of religion and the substrate of whatever. But when the rubber hits the road, that's not what convinces people that there is or there isn't a God. That's our point. And you keep coming in with this abstract stuff that, quite frankly, nobody is going to care about. And when we inspect your 
reasoning behind it in the past, it comes up wanting. It, it sounds like you're regurgitating from other people, which I think I'm now just sort of parroting what Forrest has said. But I, I no, hope you get the frustration here. I'm astounded. <laughs> I'm astounded that you are so persistent. And I'm curious as to what you think you are accomplishing. But as far as talking about the call, the, the, the subject that you want to talk about, we're done with that. I'm more interested in the psychology of a person who keeps calling in and gets subjected to these calls. Okay. Um, I mean, if you don't, um, I didn't call in to talk about theological argument. Forrest asked, what's the best reason I believe for the existence of God? Yeah. And I said yeah. a theological argument. And you, and you yeah, gave so. us one of the worst arguments existing for God. <laughs> so like, like that's, that's what we got. So like, let's talk about the teleological argument for just a second. Uh, the universe is so perfectly fine tuned that, that there must be a God that made the universe. Okay. Uh, usually the expansion, expansion of the teleological argument is that the more complex a thing is, the more it needs a complex designer an even more complex thing to have created it. So a watch is very complex. It needs a human, which is even more complex to create it. Do you agree with that proposition? Yeah, yeah, generally speaking. Okay, cool. So then what created God? Because God is very complex. Um, he created I the whole universe. God, Something more complex must have made God, right? I believe God is not limited by time and space. Then you were okay. talking with I, utter illogic. I don't I don't believe the universe is confined by time and space. Uh, there is actually, if we look at uh, uh, the Big Bang model, there is a, a great many cosmologists who say that the Big Bang was the beginning of the universe that we know of today, but certainly wasn't the beginning of everything, and that the universe might actually be eternal and have gone back eternally before that, and it was a totally different kind of thing. So, yeah, the universe is eternal, not bound by time or space the way we understand it, uh, just like your proposition of God, therefore your God is unnecessary tell me why i'm wrong because the conditions that would permit life um in the laws of physics are so astronomically low that um i believe that's evidence that an intelligent creator created those um um how did you calculate those laws? Yeah, what's your denominator what's your denominator how'd you calculate that <laughs> um all of the possible universes where life doesn't exist if you change the variables how many of them are there how, yeah exactly how do you calculate how many possible universes there are I don't know the specific number, but I've heard it's like is one. It three? Like is it three? Two trillion. That it's two trillion. Okay, that's pretty small. How did, how did you come up with I don't two know. trillion? I'm not saying specific. I've heard it's something like that. I'm saying it's so. If, I've if, heard that if so the universe, if the universe is indeed eternal, Jackie, and actually the Big Bang, as we know, is not the beginning of the universe. It actually is an eternal thing. Then it would stay. Or if we live in a closed universe, which would include a Big Bang, Big Crunch situation where it's oscillating, or any of the other cosmological possibilities, which don't mean this is the one and only iteration of the universe, which cosmologists today, people who actually know about physics and stuff and don't just speculate about it, uh, those people who talk about this stuff say that there's a lot of different options. If any of those options are true, then we could have an infinite number of universes, way more than two trillion, uh, and one of them is bound to make life. So it's not a matter of a god; it's a matter of sheer just prob waiting. It's just it's it's not even probability because it's absolutely going to happen. Does that make sense? Why don't I? Why do you believe that the universe just is doing what it's doing, and it doesn't need a god? It just it's this way. Well, I thought the general consensus, and I might be wrong, was that there was a um, Big Bang and the universe only goes back so far. That is one idea in cosmology. It happens to be one of the most prevalent, but there are a lot of other interpreta interpretations of this. I have hosted shows with actual physicists who can talk quite a bit about how the universe may very well be just absolutely eternal. It is one of the ways you can interpret the data. But even if yeah, you just I, look I, at and, the universe that we're for in the Big now, Bang, this sorry, I, think, I think it's actually a great point. The the the, the Big Bang point. The, I think, and and Forrest, you're the the scientist. You're in the science space more than I am. You sure. can correct me on this. I think the proper analysis is to say what happened before the Big Bang, right? And I think yeah. the proper answer is we don't know. Th that yeah, that th information th is permanently unavailable to us, and the proper mm -hmm. answer is we don't know. Yes, and it, 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 you're asking what happened before there was anything such as before, yeah. and in a time or in a place where space isn't, and what that is, makes no sense. What is north of the North Pole?
precisely and so like it just it's a nonsense question that makes no sense but even if we just said in this universe that we know you know came from the big bang and all these other things if we talk about that uh the universe is i don't know if you've heard this jackie but quite large uh and so there's a lot more than two trillion planets out there you're talking about two trillion possible universes there's more than two trillion planets out there by a lot and so just statistically speaking on things that we actually can observe and calculate as opposed to wherever the hell you got your calculation of all the possible universes i don't know where you got that from but things we actually agree can be observed and calculated like all the planets out there definitely just probabilistic it makes sense that there would be life on at least one of them if not a bunch of them it's why you know most people who study these things are pretty sure there's life elsewhere not just here on this planet I, I do believe there's life elsewhere. The specific statistic I'm referring to was I heard on um, a podcast called Times with Aquinas that um, their physicists estimate the prob- the amount of constants which would Is it a creationist seen, podcast? Or, um, it's called it's a Catholic podcast, Times with Aquinas. Right. I heard they said so, that this is. Yeah, so, so some guy in a very biased that, that, source. Some physicist in a very biased context explain why he, as a Catholic on a Catholic podcast, believes in the Catholic God. That makes sense. Have you ever actually had a conversation with any, like, not, they don't have to be an atheist physicist, but anybody who isn't in that particular context? Have you ever done any actual studying into physics? Have you ever gotten any formal training in physics to actually understand this at all? Uh, I've listened to some physicists, but it's not something I've paid a specific amount of. So no. Um, so no. And that's fine. You don't have to. For the yeah, same reason don't I don't have to. have to know shit about philosophy. It's not my job. But like if you're going to sit here and say, well, this one Catholic guy said some Catholic stuff, I'm neither surprised nor impressed. And at the end of the day, the point is your actual argument, the thing that you are saying, the like the, just – cut through the bullshit here the actual thing that you are saying is that you don't understand where life comes from but it seems like it's pretty specific and therefore there's a guy who made it and also this guy doesn't want you eating shellfish but doesn't really care about that nearly as much as he cares about you having gay sex that's a really big deal that's what you're actually saying here jackie so when you talk about the teleological okay. argument, there's a lot of reasons why it sucks that we just addressed one that, you know, you, you, there's, this is not the only argument. Also, even if the universe was created by God, what created that God? Also, even if we know the universe was created, why do you think it was a God that did it? If we know it was a God that did it, why do you think it was your God that did it? If we know it was your God that did it, you don't know how it did it. So to say that the universe is so fine tuned, you have to invent magic for it. If then the God also is unexplainable and you need extra magic for that. Also, even if we know that it was the God of the Bible, exactly the Bible said it, that doesn't mean anything else about the rest of the Bible. I can prove to you that Abraham Lincoln exists. It does not mean he was a vampire hunter, no matter what that book says. Wait, so what? just, j- I know, right? So Jackie, you've given us one of the weakest possible arguments for the existence of God as your own, as your best proof for the existence of God. We have absolutely nothing productive out of this conversation once again because what you are actually truly genuinely calling out about despite your protestations and despite all the pedantry and and nonsense is that you don't know where life came from so don't fuck each other in the butt that's the argument that you have and i don't get why you're cool with that being your argument and i will add jackie i i want to i want to add one other thing There were moments on this call where you actually engaged with us, and I want to thank you for that. You actually did answer some questions and talk about what you actually believed for moments. And I want you to think about that and ask yourself why you feel the need to not do that most of the time. You feel Mm -hmm. the need to sort of, I don't want to use the word hide, but shield yourself or use all of this other jargon and stuff that nobody can relate to, to either make yourself feel better or to disguise an agenda, which is kind of the conclusion that Forrest and I are coming to. Like he said, I don't know how this thing happened, therefore gay sex wrong. 
that you're trying to smuggle this agenda in. Uh, that's assuming that's your position. I believe on other calls we've gotten to the point where y- you agree with that. Forgive me if I'm wrong. It's kind of irrelevant on the specifics, but it's the why you keep calling and why you're so you you seem to be almost pathologically compelled to keep talking about this in a certain way that is very fascinating and i want to i want to thank you for actually engaging in the moments of clarity that you had where you actually were responsive uh so thank you for that uh but do you understand what forrest is saying that uh in the end it's it's really an argument from from ignorance really so what you're saying is you don't believe that variables to permit life are so astronomically small that it's no, evidence. No, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to interrupt you. Um, I didn't say I don't believe anything. You just said, so what you're saying is you don't believe. I didn't make a claim about what I didn't believe. I asked you a question if you understood Forrest's point. The question from Forrest was, or the point point was, your argument boils down to basically an argument from ignorance. I don't understand how something could have happened or it seems improbable to me. Therefore, I'm making this conclusion that's not warranted, and I am running with that you know, further than I should, you know, there's two flaws here, right? I don't understand something there for God and oh, by, because there's God, I'm going with the version I like. Do you understand that point? I'm not asking you if you agree with it. Do you understand that I understand point? The point? Okay. I appreciate that. I How do you point. respond to that? The way I would respond to that is that um, it would make sense if the argument from ignorance were truly an argument from, for ignorance, but um, f- from the research I've looked in, the consensus among scientists is that the variables permitting life are very small. And okay. these okay. are pretty well, much that's fine. That's fine. Looking. That's let's let's they take are. that as a premise. Hold on. Let's stop yeah, there. I appreciate you're sure. you're engaging with this. Let's just assume that's a premise, right? That the odds of this happening are small, right? Do you understand that yeah. one of the counter arguments that Forrest brought up is? A thing that is improbable to happen is almost certain to happen if you repeat the die roll an infinite number of times. If I've got a one in a million chance of doing something, but I take that chance 10 quintillion times, I'm going to do that one in a million thing. Uh, one quintillion or uh, whatever it under is a quintillion, but a, a huge amount of times. Do you understand that? Yes, and that's assuming the universe goes as far back as you know a very long time. It could be the case, but I'm just saying the general consensus, as I understand amongst astrophysicists, is there I don't was think time, a beginning. I I understand your position. I'm not sure that time has anything to do with it when you start talking about origins of universes and that they could be bubbling up all over the place, right? We the answer, as I said. We just don't know. That's the proper answer. It's not, wow, this seems improbable. So I'll, I'll change my, ant- my argument from ignorance to argument from perceived improbability. Um, the proper response to that is to say, I don't know. I don't know. It seems weird. What could be going on here? What are your thoughts? I, also, I saw you reach for something. Yeah, I grabbed a book off my shelf because, you know, I, I'm going to do the name dropping this time. This Woo-hoo. is this one for me. Um, this is a, a, just a snippet from a book called The Mysterious Universe by a British astrophysicist named James Jeans. This is all the way back in 1930 that he wrote this. Standing on our microscopic fragment of a grain of sand, we attempt to discover the nature and purpose of the universe which surrounds our home in space and time. Our first impression is something akin to terror. We find the universe terrifying because of its vast, meaningless distances. Terrifying because of its inconceivably long vistas of time, which dwarf human history to the twinkling of an eye. Terrifying because of our extreme loneliness, and because of the material insignificance of our home and space, a millionth part of a grain of sand out of all the sea sand in the world. But above all else, we find the universe terrifying because it appears to be indifferent to life like our own. Emotion, ambition, achievement, art, and religion all seem equally foreign to its plan. Perhaps, indeed, we ought to say that it appears actively hostile to life like our own. For the most part, empty space is so cold that all life in it would be frozen. Most of the matter in space is so hot as to make life on it impossible. Space is traversed, and astronomical bodies continually bombarded by radiation of a variety of kinds, much of which is probably inimical to or even destructive of life. 
Into such a universe we have stumbled, and if not exactly by mistake, at least as is the result uh, as the result of what may probably be described as an accident. The use of such a word need not imply any surprise that our Earth exists, for accidents will happen. And if the universe goes on for long enough, every conceivable accident which is likely to happen in time is go uh, will happen. Sorry, every conceivable accident is likely to happen in time. I, it was, I think, Huxley who said that six monkeys set to strum unintelligently on typewriters for millions of millions of years would be bound in time to write all the books in the British Museum. If we examined the last page in which a particular monkey had typed and found that it had chance in its blind strumming to type out a Shakespeare sonnet, we should rightly regard the occurrence as a remarkable accident. But if we look through all the millions of pages that the monkeys had turned off in untold millions of years, we might be sure of finding a Shakespeare sonnet somewhere amongst them, the product of the blind play of chance. That's what he wrote back in 1930. And this is actually something that we see today. There is the, I believe it's the Library of Babylon. Let me check. Uh, it's a website. Babylon. Uh, let me check. Yes, Library of Babel. Pardon me. The Library of Babel is a website uh, which is doing exactly that. It contains lowercase not letters, spaces, commas, and periods in completely random order. And the whole job of this website, it's a library of babble.info. The whole purpose of this thing is just to crank those out in completely random sequences over and over again. And so I can sit here and type forest Valkai is a big old butt face. I have typed that in. Bingo. And I that was on my search. card. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and here is not one, two, three, three different matches in this thing. It tells you the exact page oh of just God. random nonsense that it says Forrest Valkai is a big old butt face. And all it's literally all it's doing is cranking out random shit over and over and over. So even if there are two trillion possible universes, guarantee one of those is what we have here. Uh, and that and again, can't stress enough. That doesn't appear to be the case. And it's also important to point out that you're operating into Douglas's uh, Douglas Adams public, a uh, 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 puddle analogy you're a puddle yep, in a hole yeah. looking around at the hut pole and saying look this puddle was perfectly made for me no if the conditions on this planet had been different you would have evolved differently or you wouldn't have evolved at all or life wouldn't have gotten started at all and for evidence of that look at the countless other planets that don't have life the universe is what the universe is physics is what physics is and it just so happens that things line up in such a way that shit like life can can occur and for you to point at that and say i I don't understand this therefore there must be a magical explanation is bad enough but you jackie are adding so much to that and saying not only is there a magical explanation but i know the dude who did the magic and he doesn't like trans people and that's so fucking stupid i don't even know where to start with it it is so many assumptions and so illogical and so fallacious and so hateful and just dumb that i don't know how you get away with it except I actually do have a suspicion. And the suspicion that I have is that you grew up in Mississippi. You are living in a place which is deeply religious and validates and accepts and dignifies that kind of brainless position. You grew up in a culture that thinks that Judeo-Christianity and all the hatred and bigotry that comes with it is okay. And so you're fine with leaning on it. Meanwhile, if a Mormon came up to you and said, I don't like black people because Joseph Smith read out of a fucking magic rock out of a top hat and inscribed some golden tablets from some Jews that exist in North America that didn't actually exist, you would reasonably and rightly laugh them out of the room but because it's something that's comfortable for you you're okay with just saying you know what fuck it i don't need to think about it too hard all i know is that this is something that fits in my narrative fits in my worldview fits in my cultural substrate and therefore i'm allowed to sit here and have no pronouns given and misgender a fucking medical doctor because i don't like him fuck all of that jackie and i hope that you call in again sometime with a thought of your own and can actually defend it because this is the first time that i've heard you defend what you actually think and you literally gave us one of the weakest arguments for god in all tig fucking existence graham do you have anything for jackie before i proceed to end the call no not at all i think you summed it up well jackie 
I hope you learned something from this because it fucking sucks what you're doing to yourself and to your mind at such a young age. You deserve better than this. You deserve better than goddamn Jordan Peterson. Um, yeah. And I hope someday you find some people to actually listen to that that means something before I let you go. Can you give us a substrate for old time's sake? Just drop the word substrate on us. Right. All right, bye. Whew, I, I was looking around there uh, for my fire extinguisher because you were on fire there, Forrest. Uh, oh, thank you. I, I think you are probably embodying the frustration that everybody on the Internet who observes these calls is feeling. So thank you for uh, also thank you for bringing up that anthropic principle with the puddle argument. That's that's there's another. I mean, th there's so many that you can go through as to why um, uh, when I ask you know, my shorthand for all of that is what's your denominator? Like you have no clue how many states of any no. hypothetical universes could support any sort of life that could be intelligent, that looks foreign from ours, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he's hanging his hat on this is the best thing. This is the thing that should best convince you that there is an, a thinking agent that created us. And it's just uh, bull hockey. Um, I'm reminded mm -hmm. of uh, Feynman. Richard Feynman has a quote uh, about assigning uh, specialness to a current state or a special number. And he said he, he came in to give a lecture and he said, you know, the most amazing thing happened to me tonight. I saw a car with a license plate. All right. ARW three, five, seven. Can you imagine mm -hmm. of all the million license plates in this state? That's I saw one. that one. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. It's and like to, to to sit here and talk about like, well, life is so special and so perfectly fine tuned and blah blah blah. Dude, I study that shit. It, yes, it's very cool. There is absolutely nothing in the data, in the, the, the interpretation, in the meta analyses, and there's not a bit of it that's like maybe magic though. Like it's just not. It's not necessary. Yeah, yeah, right. 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 And it's especially I like. What frustrates me so much is is what we ended on is that like you know, this this belief system is used to justify so much shit. Yes. And you you talked about it too. You're just smuggling in all this fucking evil because you don't understand some science. And it's like, dude, I'm sorry. Just just say I don't know. Just say I don't right. know. I don't know so much shit. I don't know half of the fucking words out of Jackie's mouth because I don't give half a damn about these philosophers. <laughs> I really don't. I don't, yeah. I don't have anything against them personally. I just don't care. And yeah. so like it's just it. But but for me to sit here and say, hey, this philosopher said some words I've never heard before. Maybe they're a fucking wizard. That, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And and I still don't understand the point. Like I can't, I, I refuse to believe he thinks he's going to call in. And he's going to say all of this and he's going to convince anybody of any position. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's some psychological need to just feel seen or something. Um, no. <clears throat> but I thought you handled it really well. And I love Thank the quote you. you read. It felt very Sagan-esque. I assume Sagan was reading him. And uh, yeah. it was Sagan or because... somebody else who said another response to this is if the universe is designed for anything, it's for creating black holes and destroying itself. Like, yes, you that's, know, there's so really many responses. <laughs> yeah, that so, was that was 50 years years before Sagan's time and it, right. it's just it's it's poetry man it's poetry of science yeah. uh you know it's funny we we actually you know when I saw Jackie you and I he called in very early and you and I spoke briefly before the show and we're like we're gonna make this a five minute call like <laughs> <laughs> and like I I appreciate the fact that he was able to stick it out with like actually answering some questions hopefully that continues if we're ever going to talk again uh but like I, I, I think, honestly, for the people watching, I think that was actually productive to show the, the, these shows. They're not for us and they're not for our usual audience. They're for people who are on the fence, who are questioning or looking for a reason to believe. And I yeah. hope that somebody watching that was like, oh, finally, somebody has something serious to say. <laughs> and they heard how vapid it was and how meaningless it was. That'd be yeah. that'd be good. It reminds me of the uh, Patton Oswalt uh, stand up bit where he says, OK, we're going to imagine two guys and one guy is saying the Jordan Peterson stuff. Well, the substrate of the so and so leads to a cultural norm where uh, yeah. conforming to gender norms is beneficial and it advances advances the utility of something. And there's another guy standing next to him saying, well, I don't know much about those trans people, but, you know, uh, <laughs> If they want to do what they want to do, whatever, there's no no skin off my back type of thing. And, yeah. you know, his point is the second one is the good guy. <laughs> right. The first yeah, one at the end of the day, all this bullshit in and wants to take people's w rights away. The other guy just doesn't know what words to use.